just uh, saying hi to a few people that have joined us. We've got Alice, Brendan, Caroline, Fiona, Joy Grimshaw, uh, Katie, Julian. Welcome. It's lovely to have you along to uh, our breakfast conversation. Um, this is going to be something slightly different. We haven't tried this before. And the reason why I'm reading out some of your names, so Green Green, I don't know if that's your real name. Helen Elliott, it's, it's lovely to have you on board. Um, Joy, obviously, it, it, it's, 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 it's just lovely to have you because we're going to try and have a conversation with you in a way that we haven't had before. Yeah. So in other words, we're going to be inviting you to join us uh, to do some polls, to, um, if you like, sort of have some conversation with us. And, and to feed in so that everybody gets to learn from each other, because I think part of our role at More Kingston Smith is to convene a conversation. And I think what we've got here about planning for the future is quite powerful. And certainly learning from others is, is, a, is a huge thing. Um, for those that are owls, it, this is a, a difficult time of the day. I struggle in the morning until I've got my coffee. Yeah. So I hope you've got a coffee in your hand. Uh, for those that are larks that like to get up in the morning, this feels just fabulous. Yeah. So, so I hope you enjoy this morning. Um, so, moving into the uh, presentation itself, what we're going to do is is literally a couple of slides, and then it, uh, within fifteen minutes we're going to have interactivity. We're going to have questions. We're going to have your voice. Okay. So that's that's what we're going to try and do. We, we're trying this for the first time. So if it doesn't quite work, I'm sorry. At least we tried something something different. Um, the team that are all online at the moment today, we've got we've got the impact, the finance and the fundraising team. What do we do? We, we, we do uh, as part of more Kingston Smith fundraising and management. We do finance, good financial management, you know, costing cost recovery. We look at impact and help organizations to focus on the main thing and keep the main thing the main thing. In other words, impact is what we are here for. And it's the most important thing. And then strategic fundraising advice. How do we generate money from fundraising? Emma and Dan are taking us through that. Yeah. So, so you know, they are the uh, the resource that we have online. So, if it comes to a difficult question and you want to ask anything, uh, or you just want a conversation around something slightly different, the, these are the people we've got. So, so my co-presenter this morning, Dan. Yeah, um, is online. He's waving at you now. Why don't I pass over to you, Dan, for the next couple of slides? Thanks, Mark. So I'm just going to go through a little bit of how, how, how today is going to work, just because it's a little bit different for um, sessions that we've done in the past, where we've done mainly a webinar where we talk to you, um, and then we have a few um, answers to questions um, through the, the chat function at, at the end, where, where you write, answers, write questions down and we respond. So as Mark says, we're going to be a bit more interactive today. Um, and I'm just going to explain a little bit uh, about how that's going to, going to flow. Um, <clears throat> we, as, as Mark says, we, we've got a bit of content, um, 10 thoughts that we're going to uh, present to you, Mark and I. And then we've got three questions that we want to go through. And there's opportunities for you to uh, interact with us um, on, those, on, those, on those questions. We're going to be using Slido um, as, as a... Um, a, a, a new form of interactivity. So those of you who've used Slido before, hopefully you have it on, on your phones or on your computers already a, a, as an app, but I'm gonna in a moment share how, how you can do that if, if you haven't done that already. Um, but uh, if you have, get, get, get your Slido apps ready. Um, and uh, we're going we're going to vote on 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 a couple of 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 questions um some more important than than, than others um we've also got within the fuse um system you can raise your flag to join the conversation those of you who are used to zoom um and and the the, the raise your hand but a button that, that that goes on there with 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 um fuse it's raise your flag you can should be able to find the the raising your flag function if you click on the participants list um, and I see Sarah King has raised uh, her flag already. That's that's great. So in the participants um, list, there should be um, the option to raise your flag at the bottom. There's also the three dots at the far right of the menu um, on, on the bottom, which which also has a raise your flag function in there. Uh, I'm just clicking on that to to to, to raise my flag. I see Fiona's also managed to do it. So um, if if you want to have a go and a practice at that, um, that that's great. And we'll just uh, um, just see those and and and. Uh, dismiss those but later on in the conversation if you raise your flag then what we can do is we can come we can find you in the list of participants and um, 
unmute you and give you the opportunity to uh, to to say something and to, um, to and to contribute to the conversation. So that's the way that we're we're going to make it work. Hopefully, um, I think this, the fuse works differently to Zoom in that you can't most of you can't see who all the different participants are. Um, but um, but but we we've, we've got 32 people on, on on the call at the moment, and, and that number's going up. So that there's quite a lot of you out there who will hopefully all be able to uh, to make some contributions. Um, but as Mark says, we've not done this before quite like this with with interactivity and and getting people to speak. So we we hope it will work. Um, but we hope you'll you'll help us to make it work as well. So the first thing um, that that we've got um, is one of the less important questions but still um not insignificant um what what, what is your favorite breakfast um so we're going to use slido to do the polling for that um and <clears throat> there are different ways that you can you can uh, go and i was meant to have got this ready before so i'm going to put into the chat box the the um the the address there for slido if you just want to um, click on to it. G5BJ. So you might be able to see that there's a, a chat function, group chat function come up and there's a, a, a link there to go directly to the Slido or you can use the QR code or you, if you have the Slido app already, go to MKSFM breakfast or type that in after the hashtag. I'm now going to um, switch directly See if I can put that onto my screen. Um, and yes, we've already got uh, uh, a number of people who are. Um, so hopefully you can all see that the 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 full English is the one which is um, which is leading, which is surprising. When, when we did that as a team, um, full English didn't really get much at all. So um, so there we go. There's, there's, there's um, a few people have gone for slightly something slightly more exotic with uh, the Egyptian. For Madamis or the Japanese um, breakfast um, and coffee and croissant, maybe the coffee thing in there is is, is making that important. So, um, so that's quite quite a few of you that have have um, managed to find the voting and 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 get that to work. That that's great. Um, I just let that uh, go a little bit longer just to give you a chance to uh, to to join in. If anybody else is going to join in on that, well, I'd yeah, like all... to see the Japanese breakfast or bangohan, yeah. Because I because I like Japanese breakfast, I, I'm 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 trying to get that to to go up. So if a couple more people could vote against that, that would be great. You know. <coughs> no, nobody, 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 so, nobody. Everybody's voted already. So it's a tie <laughs> with full English and coffee and croissant. So so interesting. Um, it should maybe have been um, 52 for full full English and and 48 for coffee and croissant, but uh, perhaps we, we'll skip over that. Um, so um, going back to um, oh, I, somebody's changed their, their their votes anyway. Full English has, has jumped into the lead, so we'll we'll we'll, st we'll go with that. I'm going to go back to the presentation now. Hopefully, that's coming up on your screens, um, and hand over to Mark, who's going to do a little bit more serious stuff uh, next. So, so we've we've had so far. Thank, thanks, Dan. I mean, we've had so far five different conversations, five different webinars where we, we we brought people into a space to give our thoughts, and and then at the end of it, people have shared a little bit of their thinking. Um, but it's very much been one-way traffic. This to, this morning, we want much more of a conversation. The the second thing I think is really important is is trying to get some things that are practical here. So even though the next ten thoughts that we've got are if you like sort of again quite uh theoretical it, it, it it's how do you make them practical that we're going to try and elicit this morning um, so when i when i was working at, at cas um we wrote this report uh which was called charities in a dynamic world and you can see here it, it's got a lovely graphic i mean i'm i'm, I'm forever thankful to barclays for, for doing this graphic and you know, we looked at the key things that people were talking about then. Yeah. So charities in a dynamic world two years ago, people felt that collaboration was something that was really going to help them in the future to change. They were worried about financial sustainability. That's the second signpost down. Um, efficiency was 
was something that really didn't feature in in the vocabulary of a lot of different charities and people were starting to talk about for example tech and and tech change how different that now feels in the light of coronavirus and what's happened um risk appetite i think was really interesting because people started to talk about negative risk but also how do we take risk because if we don't take risk we won't have organizations or we won't maximize uh, the impact we have for those we serve. We were talking about innovation, how to scale things, and also use of reserves. So that was two years ago. And so in the past five you know, weeks since lockdown, we've had five different webinars. And it's, and it's really interesting. These, we think, are the 10 themes that have been coming out. So we're, we're just playing this back to you. And then we're just going to have a conversation with three questions around them. Yeah. So I think I think the first thing we've we've got out of all of the conversations is impact. Um, keep the main thing the main thing. So many of us at the moment have been torn by money. Um, money is driving us rather than impact. It's a real tension. How do you balance those two out? And you know how do you maximise your social value while continuing and and surviving? Yeah. So impact has to be right at the heart of what we are and what we do. And it's incredibly important, especially when money is taking over our agendas quite often. The second thing is agility. We've heard from a lot of um, people on the webinars, a lot of people when we've been having individual calls, that um, they don't have good quality information. They're not being agile. Uh, the trustees are, are, are either very, very engaged and coming into all of the detail, which isn't helpful, or, or are completely absent. Um, and so being able to get the cadence, for example, of governance right, being able to get uh, enough of a sounding board to take good decisions is, is, is really key. But also being agile, being able to try things, fail, uh, try again, pivot, all of those type of things around, around like sort of lean uh, startup and, and lean thinking. Survival, um, you know, really about how do we survive, prioritizing ruthlessly, stopping nice to do projects or nice to have projects, making sure that you're using your reserves appropriately. You know, and, and that will hopefully lead us into the fourth bullet point, evolution. This is not business as usual. I'm, I'm seeing, for example, a lot of people putting out online at the moment, how are you going to change your strategy for the future? Well, many organizations don't have a strong strategy to start with, yeah? So, so is it a case of evolving? Is it a case of writing a strategy? Is it a case of survival? I think, I think there's a real complexity playing out there. And as you come over the coronavirus, if you like, sort of, you know, initial hump and initial, uh, you know, getting online, working remotely, working in lockdown, we're now starting to think about what does the future look like and what do beneficiaries really need? And back to the impact piece, are we, are we really having impactful services, for example, online? How can we maximize the impact in a lockdown scenario? And then number five, if you like, the one closest to my heart, um, knowing your numbers, knowing your margins, getting, getting a handle on what you can invest in your infrastructure. And also, um, if you like, sort of just pushing back um, gently on, on people who are saying, let's spend less on our infrastructure, let's cut our infrastructure costs. Well, if they're not being efficient, absolutely correct, you should remove that cost. But sometimes you need that cost to be able to deliver. And I'm seeing so many organizations cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting their infrastructure. It comes to a place where organizations, uh, you know, are no longer viable because you just don't have an infrastructure to scale up. Yeah. So, Dan, six through 10, what, what are your thoughts from what we've heard so far? You're on mute, Dan. Cool. Unmuting me, and uh, and somebody else is unmuting me at the same time. Um, so yeah, technology. Um, the the way we work is changing, um, and. Mark's alluded to it already. Uh, we're still getting used to that technology. Um, we're still speaking on mute when we shouldn't be speaking on mute, for example. Um, but but we we all kind of we've we've learned very quickly some of the some um, 
new ways of engaging, new ways of using technology, and the way that charities have managed to make that change happen has has been, in some cases, remarkable. Um, uh, and uh, sort of necessity is, is the mother of invention, perhaps. But uh, that demonstrates that that introducing new technologies, changing the way that we work, is something that can happen and can happen quickly. Um, but um, I think the key thing there is that if we can do that with some forms of technology like the working from home um, scenario, like the, 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 the use of, 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 of Zoom or, or, or Teams or, or, or Fuse or, or whatever, then we need to be able to apply that same uh, um, ability and agility with other areas of, of technology to um, get our charities um, engaging with the, the with uh, technological options much more. The, the the commercial sector has managed to do that and is, is leaps and bounds ahead of us. Um, and and that now this demonstrates that charities can 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 catch up quickly. Um, fundraising um, it, it, that's the area that, that I guess closest to my heart. Um, and there there are a number of things that are coming through with with this coronavirus. Um, crisis one is the um, one particular thing is the importance uh, to continue to engage closely with your donors um, to think about why they're giving to you what motivates them um, don't not just be interested in the transactions but be interested in the relationships and developing and deepening those relationships particularly as um, it's harder to, to manage those relationships in a, in a socially distanced world so the, the the value of those relationships is even is even more critical when you can't actually um, simply engage with 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 uh, with with donors by by going to meet them. Um, so so you need to work harder at that. Um, and also the importance of thinking about the 80-20 rule, the Pareto rule, that 20% of your funds um, or 80% of your funds comes from 20% of your of your of your donors. Um, so the importance of, of knowing who those 20% um, are and, and really working hard to engage um, properly with them. Um, collaboration, uh, as, as it says, who are the collaborators and stakeholders that matter? Um, so as, as, we, as we maybe dr drill down to the basics, um, it's thinking about who, who, who do we really need to be engaging with? Um, not just with our donors, but with with our with our, our our beneficiaries, with our partners, with other organisations that are doing similar things. It's been great to see how the 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 funding world, um, the the grant makers have also uh, collaborated uh, quite significantly um, in order to respond to the coronavirus crisis. Um, and that kind of collaboration, I hope, will, will will continue in different ways in terms of of sharing their information and making sure that their funds are being used as effectively as possible. That principle needs to be to, to be applied. Um, that kind of collaborative principle needs to be applied a, across the board. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm asking great questions. That, that's what we're going to try and do today. Um, but I think that the 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 key thing there is is that. Um, when things change, there there are no stupid questions, uh, and that we all have the opportunity to to observe, to to comment, to, to have a view. Um, and it's as we ask ask important questions, as we look at things, and as as we as we as we uh, you know every day is a school day. We we try to learn. We ask. Um, then that's how we move forward, and that's how 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 things change. So we're going to encourage you to ask some questions later on, um, and. Particularly asking some deeper questions against these um, these ten points or the, the, these nine other points that we've got in our list as well. How can you pull out the key thing around agility or, or technology by asking important questions? Um, and then community. How do, how do we carve out a different space and and, and society? We we were talking about the world being different um, after coronavirus, after maybe after the 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 the, um, the financial crisis that that, that will hit us um, as as well as as we come out of coronavirus. Um, what is that society going to look like? What what are the, the um, already the 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 idea of of a, a sort of a, a corporate sector, a, a, a statutory sector, and, and a third sector. Um, uh, have have been uh, diminishing and, and lots of blurring on the edges and, and I think we're going to see even more of that blurring as, as we come out of, of coronavirus um, so what does what is the world going to look like how are we going to make our our, our community something that we we want to uh, to be engaged with and and shaped by the values of, of the of of of, of um, non-profit organizations of, of the third sector um, so thinking about thinking about community and how we make that different is 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 important moving forwards as well so back so to mark 
Yeah, so so Heather has has been typing into the chat box. We can see that other participants can't, and we're gonna we're gonna be opening up the lines, if you like, so that people can join and give their opinion. And we're gonna we're gonna start really with um, we think the pertinent conversation at the moment. This is this is where a lot of boards are. Um, and uh, sorry, Fiona, you can see Heather's questions. That's great. It means that other people probably can as well. Um, anybody who wants to type things into the group chat, I'm keeping a, a, a note. So is Marcus, who sat in the background, and Dan, Dan's noting as well. So, so we, we we have this um, we have this, if you like, tension that's playing out at, in boards and and senior management teams at the moment, which is, um, are we talking about our survival? Um, you know, as the sector, as as nonprofit organisations, you know, and surviving because it's important to survive. Otherwise, we can't help the future yeah or are we talking about evolution in other words we've kind of got our path mapped out now we, we can see the direction we need to go but we need to evolve you know and it might be through tech it might be through um you know it might be through different types of of, of like sort of interaction <laughs> it might be finding the space between government you know the public sector and and non-profits and, and creating something new within that. So we're going to go back to Slido. Yeah, we're going to we're going to just try this. Yeah, and um, when we've had a quick look at the Slido poll, then we're going to open for comments, and we'll we'll take the conversation from there. I'll try and moderate it. So so Dan's gone back to Slido. You should you should be you should be able to go now back to Slido. We've got thirty five people, thirty six people online. Let's have a vote. Yeah. So so for those, if you remember. Just click through on the link that Dan sent, um, or go to slido.com and use uh, the the if you like the name hashtag MKSFM breakfast. Yeah, Marcus has put the link up again. So eleven people have said uh, this is about uh, or have voted so far. Uh, about a third are saying this is evolution. Um, Twenty percent, let's say roughly, are just trying to survive. Uh, but mostly it's about getting the balance between the two. Yeah. So we've got we've got now, you know, 17. We can see the votes coming in. Um, if evolution's moving forwards a bit there, Mark, which is interesting. Yeah, it is. It is. So so I mean, you know, survival's dropping back, which is which is not what I expected. I expected many more charities to be talking about their survival. Yeah. Um here's here's a question for you, which we can which we can um you know wrestle with. Is it because we have an inertia to change? Do do we do we think we can change, or do we think we only have one way of doing things and we're locked in that cycle? Can we can we change? Yeah. Or do we have the agility to be able to evolve? Yeah. So so with twenty people having voted, um, let, let's just let's just wait for one. Let's say thirty seconds more. We'll get the final vote. Um. I think Dan, I'm going to call it there. I'm going to be John Snow with the swingometer, <laughs> and and I'm I'm going to say that evolution is what people are mainly focused on. But but let's not forget the hard rump of ten percent, twenty percent of charities that are. Oh, Peter Snow, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, let, let's not forget the hard rump of ten percent of charities that are just trying to survive. Yeah. So so what we what we're going to put. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to invite people to to comment. So, if you remember, you can put your hand up. Um, we're going to ask for a first volunteer. Once the volunteers start coming, um, you'll typically get a flood of other people who want to comment. So, who would like to speak first? And let's just try this. So, can somebody put their hand up? So, Alice. Yeah. Yeah, so Alice, Marcus, if you could just um, release Alice so she can she can talk. Let, let, let's hear what Alice. So the, the floor is yours, Alice. Hi there. Um, we spent the first, we're a social care provider. We spent the first three weeks struggling with changing our models of working and providing safe care and PPE and all that kind of stuff. We had a longer term um, organisational strategy, which is now on ice. And I don't know if it's going to happen or not around collaboration with another organisation. Um, so we're now back into going, what's the future, what does the longer term future hold for us around some service development we want to do? So it's, um, yeah, in between, really. And my board are very disengaged. 
And, and in terms of in terms of the charity you are, Alice, I mean, if you just want to explain just a little bit, I mean, can you do your business as normal at the moment or have you had to change profoundly? Um, we we have to do our business as normal. We run a care home. So okay. we have to go in and run a care home and provide supported living. We've had some people who, whose family have chosen to have them come home. It's for adults with learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But no, it, all the lots of people have changed. Lots of us are working from home. But all those that actually provide support work are with their clients. Okay, that, Alice, that, that's that's superb, and and thank you so much for being the guinea pig and, and trying this out. Who 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 would like to be the next person to um, raise their their flag? We do have some people who've uh, who've written things in. Okay, so, um, so I don't know whether they. Um, yeah, let, let's go, let's go for the let's go for the chat function then because I mean Bryn, right, I think we're all changing. Karen, Karen, Karen um, Woodley. Great, uh, Karen. We're we're going to come we're going to come to you next. So over to you. Let, let's see what you think about this survival versus evolution. Um, hello, can you hear me? We can. We yes. can hear you perfectly. Hi, um, I'm I'm chief executive of Cambridge House, which is a community heart band delivers a range of frontline services from law centre across to um, youth empowerment and disabled people's empowerment. Um, we've kind of a slid into digital delivery quite um, easily across advocacy services, which are statutory contracts, um, youth empowerment, law centre and um, advice work we do for tenants of criminal landlords and that's been a real surprise to um, my teams because our assumption has been that people contact face to face was the, the perfect way of doing things and we're beginning to realise that um, there are some very innovative ways of working that could increase our impact and increase access for people that we previously thought had to have physical contact with us. And part of that thinking comes from the fact that we're also a community hub and we've been that for 131 years. What I think is interesting is that my board are much more concerned about our future strategy than they are the, the, the crisis itself. Um, and we're at a point where we're beginning to prepare our next kind of five year um, strategic plan. Um, and so the, the struggle that I have at this point is balancing that governance um, drive with the staff drive, which is how do we deliver, how do we deliver and how do we manage the crisis without creating the kind of um, financial nightmare that could close us. Um, and I think that um, there is a real difference if your board is working well with um, their kind of preoccupation, which is long term survival and the capacity of the staff who are handling the who, who are doing all the heavy lifting for delivery during crisis um finding the kind of headspace to think about long-term strategy and even to recognize how um some of the innovative practices that we have been forced rather reluctantly to take up could actually drive better thinking about the future. I think the other thing that has been interesting given the sort of government's um, uh, sort of silencing of charities in terms of, ad, you know, advocating and campaigning and that kind of stuff and the confusion around those policies is us having to rethink given the fact that our service users have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19 is to think about how do we create a, a better influencing and um, campaigning voice so that um, our service users are not so vulnerable to any disturbances in the political, economic, et cetera, environment in society. And I think um, COVID-19 has potentially given us the kind of evidence to support a much more proactive view of how to tackle inequity in society in the longer term. 
I, I, I think, um, I think Karen, Karen the, the last point there that you've raised is absolutely fascinating. And, and, it's, and it's been, in, in other um, conversations I've, I've been in, it's been something that's, that, that's, that's, that's like sort of, if you like, come out of the woodwork for me. Um, it, it, when, when uh, before the lockdown, before the change, government had all sorts of bureaucracy, which, which was in some cases holding charities and nonprofits back from delivering. Um, if you like now, the space has opened up so that people can do things in a, in a much more, if you like, uh, thoughtful or different way. The question that some of the charities, especially in the health service world, are, are asking are, will we be forced to go back to the old way that we had to work by government? Yeah, Will we be allowed to have that space to operate and, and to evolve and, and change? Um, I, I, I've just mapped out, I've been taking a little mind map uh, Karen, as you've as you've been as you've been talking, and as I've been talking, and I think the other thing that's really come out is this tension between you know governance, if you like, and strategy uh, versus staff and tactics. You know, and and staff are very much in the space of help. We've got, we've got to deliver, and we've got to deliver now, and it's the most important thing for us. And this is quite complex. Um, to to governance that are saying, right, we'll get over this this blip. Um, uh, you know, we'll be back to business as usual. Well, it probably won't be business as usual, but but at, but at the same time, they're thinking in a much more strategic way. And it's interesting. Richard Wilson has put a comment down here: survival or evolution is not quite right. Yeah, um, it's more like a revolution in our finance and operating models. I mean, if we unflagged Richard, would would Richard like to just make a comment about this revolution? We'll, we'll just try it. If Richard's comfortable, yes, please. If if not, so if you can just un, unmute Richard and let's see, let's because this is interesting about revolution. Okay, Richard, Hi, if you're on, hello, Richard. It, it, it's it's over to you and and your thoughts on revolution. Yeah, I, th I think we've had some pressures building in our finance and operating model for a while, and I think the reality is that that this sort of step change discontinuity in the outside environment will probably stimulate or bring bring some of the changes that probably were going to have to happen at some point anyway but brings the sort of external driver that makes things happen um, so we were kind of uh, probably evolving towards a cliff if that makes mm. sense and, yeah, and now yeah. actually and, and part of the challenge is this now gives people the, a very clear view over the cliff um, so we're we're a, we're a national church organization and we've seen a a, a 25 percent drop off in our income in mar in april um and and so that that you know our, our will will survive um we will scale to what what we can afford but the challenge is what does that look like that, that's that's great and and also i think you i think you you put it in the right way because so many commercial businesses that you know, I'm keeping contact with at the moment are, are really struggling with this. They're saying, um, you know, we, we were going to have to evolve in any case. This is just a, forced us to evolve harder and faster. And, and managing that pace of change and managing the implementation of that is our is our key issue. I mean, is is that fair, Richard? Yeah, and I think part of the part of the, in some sense, the opportunity in this is that um, one of the things you have as a resistance to change is people saying. Do we really need to change? Yeah. Um, and, and often when the forces are steady evolution that are, you know, we've seen a gentle decline in our income over a long period, you know, not keeping up with inflation, probably slightly falling in cash terms, but not dramatically. And mm. of course, everybody just sort of breathes in a bit, mm. managing, you know, there's a sort of evolutionary coping strategy. Um, but that fails to make sort of fundamental operating model change. Um, mm -hmm. because everybody goes, well, you know, we can cope with two or three percent this year, and then next year they can cope with two or three percent, and then next year they can cope with two or three percent. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and actually, you end up failing to tackle the underlying challenges. And 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 it, those, I think, a lot of that resistance may well now fall away. So, um, so I'm going to just. I'm just going to come to Dan just to round off this before we move on to the next one. But I think this point that you're making, Richard, about survival, evolution or revolution, um, 
you know, is well made because either it's a death by a thousand cuts or, or it's, it's, it's profoundly changing what we do to, to survive for the future. I mean, Dan, any final comments on this before we go to the next question? Yes, so I, I was, um, one of the points that Karen made around um, the, the challenge between the, the, the board wanting to, uh, or looking a long way ahead and, and, and the staff dealing with, with, with more tactical issues is the, also the challenge of the interrelationship between the two, that the, the changes that staff are making now on a tactical basis are probably things which we need to, or which her organization needs to be learning from and her trustees need to be learning from in order to to um, ensure that their longer term thought thought plans uh, or thought strategies um, make make sense um, I think you sort of alluded to that a little bit more and, and uh, Sarah King was making the point about cathedrals um, where they need to evolve to survive and the, the two are linked and and, and the, the two things are, are linked it's about which um, which, which we focus on on more, um, and also how we how we make them link as well, um, and and how we how we manage that linkage between the two, and, and and capitalize on it in order to ensure that what we 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 come back to the number one point on our list um, that the impact the 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 main thing is 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 the, is the main thing. So it's how we evolve, and and we have we need to survive. Um, so we need to evolve to survive and we need to survive to evolve but what's the per what's the point of it uh, and, and what's the purpose i think that's the key thing to keep focused on and, and just one final comment from heather you know full cost recovery in terms of uh, contracts well for 22 years that's what my real focus has been and a lot of the sector um and and a lot of the research that that's out there has shown a gap of about six to ten percent of, of all of the work that we do is not funded. Um, and that's partly because donors don't want to fully fund. It's partly because we have bad practice in terms of cost recovery. To try and help that, we're putting out um, with this uh, you know, webinar, at the links at the end, there'll be a cost recovery toolkit that Marcus and myself wrote at CAS, which will help you on that journey. But the upside of six to 10% of everything you do um, from grants, from contracts, et cetera, that's a big win you know, and more money for your organizations. Dan, should we go to the, we'll go to the next slide now. We'll make this, a, we'll make this a, a, a little bit quicker so we can get through to the good questions at the end. So we, 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 yeah. we've got three different questions embedded, folks. So we're gonna try and go to number two now, yeah? And um, if we, I, I don't know, I think it's probably me who can move the slide forward, yeah? yeah. So, so oh, yeah. Question, yeah, I was gonna say, we're both doing the same thing. Um, Quick question number two then is really about this tension between keeping the main thing the main thing, in other words, impact, or focusing on finances. And and my my concern at the moment is that finances is becoming all consuming. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so is it really, are we really being social purpose organizations and focusing on the change we can bring about, or, or are we just focusing on on the money? And and people that have uh, you know, know me from the past, will know that it, 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 it's, it, it's a constant tension in, in our world. Um, a lot of the social enterprise theory and social entrepreneurship theory says you can't hold both of those things in your mind at the same time. So it's, so it's like alchemy. You've got finances and you've got impact. And um, what you've actually got is finances and, and, and impact. And you can only ever think about the finances or, or the impact. Keeping that balance of finance and impact in charities is, is really hard. So we're gonna go back to Slido. Marcus has published the link here. Um, let's just have a look what you think of, about at the moment. Are you more focused on finances, you, your impact, or, or really the balance of the two? So, so back to Slido, let's, let's see what you think. And we'll, we'll give it a little bit of time to run and see how that, that looks. So you should be able to be on Slido. We've got 12 people coming in. 36% um, thinking uh, it's, it's well, 35% thinking it's about finances, impact about 29% and balancing the two about 33. So um, I think we had about 22 vote last time. Uh, let's, let's see where we get to on, on the vote here. So, so we're gonna push for a couple more people to come through. 
and I'm going to be Peter Snow this time, yeah, for for the person who made me laugh uh, last time, and and just said that I, I I wasn't I wasn't the right person with the swingometer. Um, so so we've got finances, we've got maybe one or two more people still to vote. Um, so so you know, no surprise if you like uh, that we're trying to balance the two out. That's forty percent. But then finance is 36%, you know, and, and focusing on, if you like, the money, 36% is, is quite a lot, if you like, more than the impact. And we've got some comments coming in online here. Um, you know, Heather, you're saying, I, I think we need to be more focused on impact initially, but we're now focusing on the finance. Now, Heather, you haven't spoken yet. Would you, would you like to put up your flag and Marcus can unmute you and you can, you can have a, a bit of a, a conversation there. Alice, short-term focus on impact, but this will swim backwards and forth. Yet, yeah, Marcus thinks very much that it's iterative as well. We have healthy reserves now, but will that see in the future? And Richard, um, surely this is a false question. Nonprofits are always having to think about how, how they can manage impact with the resources that they have, potentially, Richard. So Heather, if, if we can unmute you, would you like to just give us a thought on, on this? Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear, Heather. Come in. Uh, and welcome. Uh, I think as an organisation, we were probably quite fortunate in that we were just about to buy a building and we got gazumped just before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So we've had the luxury of not having to panic too much in the first initial bit about cash flow. Yeah. So we, we were able to sort of come in with quite a, a strong emergency response without having to initially panic about that too much and that's enabled us to have a little bit of thinking time if you like about that um mm. what we're struggling with now is how do we measure the impact we've had um because what we've done has been completely different to what we would normally do and all the tools that we've got for measuring impact won't work so yeah. that's great we've been having with our trustee board yesterday actually how are we going to measure the impact of this um I think we've also been fortunate that we do have grant funding, not 100% grant funding, and that's been a problem in itself. But um, we are, what I found very interesting is we are in three very large partnerships which we get our grant funding through, and that's put us in an incredibly strong position mm -hmm. because it's not just us, it's a whole partnership um, approach. So that, but that balance now, you know, that, that, that train is coming down the track for us. And we're starting to think now about, this is the point now which we're gonna to have to start planning some of that fairly ruthless stuff about yeah. what happens in the future. And we don't want to go back to where we were. We want to change, you know, with some things we do, but some things we really want to change and this is our opportunity to do it. So it's about how we manage that and how we take that forward. And I can, I, I'm starting to see some reluctance in the organization now, whereas in yeah. the beginning, one was all full of adrenaline and whoa yes let's do it and now that i'm saying well and um, let's not go back to doing that and, oh well hmm. so um i think this is when it's going to become challenging um, and what kind of charity are you heather i mean alice has just asked that we're an old people's charity so we're in age uk we support all the people um uh, county-wide across the county so um when it all started we've had to step we've had to shut an awful lot of services that were face to face yeah. But we have set up emergency response services, shopping services, telephone befriending, well checks, so all, you know, information, all sorts of stuff. Um, so we have continued to function with the vast majority of our staff still in place, not the volunteers, um, but the digital stuff has been an absolute eye opener. So, so in the background, we've got some of the team here. Penny said we'd only ever come to her with a really difficult impact question here. Yeah? So I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like sort of you know ask either Penny or, or Carl just to just to comment on on this question. I mean, you know, with with um you know uh, the coronavirus at the moment, how do we measure impact? I mean so so Penny, you are you're online here. If if you'd just like to give us some thoughts or or Carl, um both of which are from the impact team. I mean uh, Penny, what, what are your thoughts? Hi Mark. Um yeah, I think that that's a really good question. And I saw Heather, you were, um, that was sort of one of your original comments. Um, 
And it's a challenge for sure, because as you said, a lot of your tools to measure impact, gather data, gather, gather evidence, um, might be null and void now and, and not appropriate. Um, but I thought you raised a really good question around sort of, um, and you were saying you're getting some resistance at the moment, um, how do you make those decisions um, moving forward around what you keep and what you change? And we would sort of um, encourage sort of people making that decision, obviously from an impact point of view, which is um, where, where I sit in the team, and you need some sort of impact evidence in order to make those decisions. Um, and we um, follow the, the principles, seven principles of social value, which um, you may be familiar with, and number one is involve your stakeholders, um, which are your sort of key beneficiary groups. So I guess the key question for us is how do you do that? How do you involve your stakeholders and how do you really get to um, change? When we think about impact, we're thinking about what is and um, what change is being experienced by um, by the beneficiaries, by the stakeholders. Um, and and so, you know, your old tools may not work. You might, might be able to adapt some, but, you know, you might need to really sort of evolve quickly or revolutionize perhaps. And, and how do you get to your stakeholders and how do you ask those simple yet effective questions around what is um, what are the changes for them around the sort of the way that you're delivering your services for the moment? Um, are they positive? Are they not so positive? Perhaps what we would call, you know, is there any negative impact and where and, and what can we do about that? So we can use that evidence to then go forward and say, okay, well, this is working really well. Um, someone earlier on the course, sorry, I can't remember the name, was saying that there's some things that are working really well that they'll actually take forward um, and these things. So I don't know if that's completely answered the question, and I'm sure Carl would like to um, comment now as well. Good morning, folks. Can you hear me? Hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm in. Um, it's a really difficult question. How do you measure impact in a crisis? Um, the, I'd need to know, Heather, a wee bit more about the tools you're using. But I think I think Penny has essentially nailed it. It's down to the data that you can get the hold of. I think in, in an emergency situation, we all have to recognise that what you can do in impact is going to be less robust than what you would normally do. Um, uh, you know, again, depending on what tool you're using. But being less robust in an emergency situation doesn't mean that it's not good enough information to move forward. I mean, we have certainly uh, done a piece of work recently where we've been predicting impact, still using the principles that we use, but maybe not having all the data or all the information that we'd like to have, but having a, a sense of good enough information. Um, uh, I, I can think that that is always better than not thinking about the effect of your work, even in a crisis situation. I, I, I remember an example recently where um, there was a fire in, the, in a town close by here and an old folks home was completely gutted. Luckily, um, not um, uh, no one was injured, uh, everyone got out and so on. But the, the town then rallied around to actually help. And what happened is people turned up at a centre that I have an office in. People turned up with all sorts of stuff that actually wasn't needed, wasn't appropriate, wasn't useful to the situation. And if we'd sat down, even, even having a rule of thumb or back of an envelope idea of what was the likely impact that we were facing right now, what's needed and what would create the better social value in terms of a response. And it was it was quite possible to do something like that in terms of thinking, well, this is going to be uh, the more likely impact in this situation. Um, and uh, we've, we've, as I started to say, we've, we've done a piece of work recently where we've been predicting impact using the principles not having all necessarily all the data that we need, but coming up with like a kind of a red, amber, green sort of traffic light system for where the impact is likely to lie. And if you were in a position to do something like that, we could always chat to you after this about how you do that kind of thing. But if, we, if you were in a position to do something like that, you might just avoid doing things that aren't actually going to be particularly useful.
I was going to say, Carl, thank you so much, and, and Penny, thank you so much for, for being there in the background to, as I say, answer the, uh, the, the pithy questions uh, around impact. And also, Alice uh, and um, Heather, I hope, I hope that answers your question. We, we've, we've got 10 minutes left of the call. I'm going to, I'm going to pass on to Dan now to the, to the third question. Um, we just want to get through this with you uh, and, and see what you think. Okay, great. Thanks, Mark. So, um, really, this this third third section is to um, try to unlock some of the other elements we we sort of picked on on impact and um, finances, evolution and survival. But there there are other things in there as well, which are, which are worth uh, worth discussing. We think um, we, we had we weren't completely sure how the raising the flag idea would work, so we thought we would particularly focus on on question three for raising the flag but people have been pretty good at doing that already um so 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 that's great um and also um putting some some comments in in the group chat so i think it, it's the last um five minutes or so um it, it, it's over to you uh, are there things that you wish you want to ask some great questions that you think you can um you are unlocking within your organizations um around maybe collaboration or or, or um uh, agility um, or, or technology of fundraising to pick on some of the things that we haven't uh, talked about so much already already this morning um, so feel free to to raise your flags or, or to uh, to put something into group chat um, and by, by the way Dan it's nice to have you back you completely yes, disappeared sorry. you know I, so. I, I should have explained um, <laughs> Most of us are struggling with sort of Wi-Fi or broadband, and those sometimes are, those are sort of quite uh, critical to uh, enable this this sort of new technological thing to 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 happen. Um, I had a more fundamental issue that, that we had a power cut uh, where, where I live, so um, everything went off, um, including mobile signal for some reason. So I couldn't have even uh, tethered my 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 laptop, which was running on a battery, to to my mobile because I had no mobile signal. So. So yeah, so, um, broadband's important. Electricity is even more critical. Um, so so, so we, we we we've got um, we've got the chance for people to put great questions into the question box. So please write your questions. Peter, you've raised your flag. Marcus, do you do you want to give Peter the floor? Uh, Peter, can you hear us? Sorry, Dan. Can you hear me? You, you, it's you. Yeah. Hello, Peter. Uh, can you? We can hear you. Right. Okay. I just wanted to talk about closures because one of it's not we've not mentioned this morning the impact on charities from actually physically closing their premises and having to work remotely. Um, I know technology has its own problems, and there's been some stuff on the chat, but on the whole, technology d does work reasonably well. Um, especially where volunteers are not involved. But the issue with actually closing your premises is a problem because things go on in those premises. So um, obviously uh, where they're closed, you can't do the things or often can't that you were using them for. And I think the um, indefinite nature of the closure of our premises is causing a lot of charities uh, considerable problems. I'm representing a, a religious charity this morning and, and it's quite challenging to uh, to do what we normally do remotely yeah um and and you you you're obviously you're you're aware you're you're not alone in that um yeah and there's there's not not a huge amount that uh, that that, that can happen there apart from i guess it it, it is partly a matter of time um and that, that we will be uh, moving away from this. So it's, it's making sure that you're engaging with, with individuals and, and, and beneficiaries in some shape or form, um, sort of in that interim, that you don't go completely silent as, 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 because there's, there's nothing that, that uh, or there are fewer things that, that you can do. Um, but uh, yeah, the, 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 the actual spaces that, that we use or we can't use are, are, are of, of major challenges. I mean, the, uh, the other world that I'm, I'm aware of um, quite quite closely is, is around the arts organisations and, and, and theatres, um, and you know their, their venues are 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 critical to to how they how they um, add, add social value and, and and do the things that they do. Um, but sometimes there are some things that, that where you, where you are able to to um, 
sort of take a handbrake turn and do something which meets the beneficiary's needs but is in is in a very different sort of space so um um it, it, it's worth looking into that whether, whether there are ways that uh, that, that you, if you focus less on on the, your, your normal mode of practice and more on what are the needs and what are the needs right now in, in our beneficiaries and, and how can we uh, meet those needs um, even if it's in a temporary way then then, then maybe that that's that's part of the solution so I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fill in four great questions that have come in I think Fiona one yep. there's a question here around raising money for the NHS you know how are we going to cope in a fundraising world when money seems to be going for the NHS Alice um, you know, can we use social media as a new approach? I'm going to turn your comment into a question. You know, can we use social media as a new approach? And then, Sarah, you've got some great questions there. Um, what do we? What would we do if we if we could do something different? Will we be able to do the things that we've always done? Uh, what can't we afford any longer? And we need to we need to drop. Yeah. So 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 those are some great questions coming through. I mean, Darren, Dan, you've got a couple more comments that are coming from Karen, uh, you know, Heather and Alice. I mean, well, just just to finish off this morning's yeah. webinar, what, what other questions do you think we should be asking? So I, I think, I mean, the, the, the question about the, the raising money for the NHS um, challenge, um, how, how can you get some some traction when when everybody's focused on on, on one particular cause I, I, I think that, I mean in some ways that's not a new challenge that's something that, um, that actually some NHS char charities have faced in the past when they haven't been the the the, the, the main focus um, and and the the, the um, issues been on, on on the other foot um, and they have made able to get cut through with with um, more traditional charities perhaps so um, I, I think it, it's Every charity will have its 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 group of supporters, its group of donors. The key thing is to focus on on who those are and who, how you can get into your community of those of those supporters, and and um, keep asking and um, you know, not worry about what's happening with the other charities, but but, but focus on, on 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 your own thing. Um, Alice, comment about using social media. Yes, it, it builds up. It, it's it is also about communities as well. Um, social communities in in a in a um in in a different environment that we're not face to face with those communities we're 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 we're, we're, we're screen to screen with them um as in any community it takes time to build social communities take time to build as well um however the, the key things with that is is getting other people to help you with with that process and and um involving other people in that process and and people who have networks people who are connected um if you can engage with the connected people they can connect with a, with a lot more and and the whole thing about social media is, is is that series of connections um but it's maximizing those connections to get to, to get the best ones to get the best reach um it, it is critical um I, I like sarah's comments about um other things that you shouldn't do anymore um and not being afraid to drop things um, um i think that that's that, that is that is something which a lot of organizations are really tackling or grappling with at the moment what what can we drop how how can we drop stuff um how do we make those decisions um we've managed to make decisions to take things up quite quickly but we need to be, be able to, to recognize when things aren't working and 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 drop them um quickly as well not worry about not 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 in, be too in, in internalized about about that but again thinking about the the overall difference that you're making for your organization are you making that difference and if you are then focus on the things that, that are working and don't and and drop the things that aren't working um, so 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 just because we've got literally one more minute left yeah uh, just just rounding this up because we've got literally one more minute left yeah. i mean i i, I was going to say if helen is able to um, just if we can just raise the flag on Helen so she can have the final comment and then we'll just talk about very quickly what else we've got coming up and then that's the end of the, the webinar. So Marcus, if you can just unmute Helen and, and just see if Helen's got any any comment because she's been she's been, if you like, sort of tweeting repeatedly down through here. Helen, can you hear us? Hello. Hi, Helen. Helen, can you hear us? 
Helen, can you hear us? No, I don't. I don't think Helen is going to is going to comment. I I just think you know back to where we started, just asking great questions, and this the trail of comments have been absolutely fantastic in the in the group chat. Um, so just thank you for everybody who's. Um, uh, sorry, I can hear you, but you can't hear me. I'm sorry, Helen, if, if you hadn't had a chance, we were going to give you the, the last say. Um, just thank you, everybody who, yeah. who's joined in with us. I mean, you know, Dan, I'm not sure. I think it was you who was doing the last slide, so forgive me if I've, I've jumped no, in no, no, here. No, go ahead. Um, so, so just to say thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for coming and, and sharing breakfast with us. I, I'm going back to my bananas and coffee. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm going uh, to start mine. <laughs> you're going to start yours, yeah. Um, and, and you know, next next Thursday we've got a, a webinar: how and why impact measurement is still crucial for your organisation. So, so back, you know, back to the conversation that Carl and Penny jumped in on, which Heather asked: how do I measure impact in this time of coronavirus? We, we're we're going to be uh, we're going to be hosting that, and that's four o'clock next Thursday. We've got ongoing services. We've got our bid writing cost recovery. We talked about organisations being you know needing to focus on full cost recovery at the moment it's absolutely critical it's an, it's an easy upside six to ten percent of your funding um if we can help you please stakeholder engagement 30 minute surgery slots where you can you can talk to any of us in in the team here for 30 minutes uh you know have a have a conversation we're happy to help you that way it's part of our giving back to the to the sector and then on the right hand side we've just got all of our different um you know areas and thought pieces and webinars we've done in in the past so, I mean, I, I, I'm Mark. Thank you so much. I mean, Dan, is, do you want do you want to say a final thank you and, and round yep. up? No, yeah. thank thank you for 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 engaging with this and 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 the, I think the group chat has managed to work well as well as the uh, the raising the flag. So, um, we weren't sure how this would work, um, but um, it, it's worked, worked, worked very well. So, thank you for for engaging with that and and for for contributing. Um, I think Alice asked do we have email updates um with with um what we're running and yes there will be an email message going out to all of you um with uh with some links to some of the things that we're doing and links to this this slideshow as well so um we'll, we'll be in touch by email uh, at some point later on today uh, once once all of that's uh, all, all set up so uh, do do look out for that email and um come back to us if you've got questions or, or, or comments yeah. so thank you it's been great even the things that we might do in the future so thank you. It's been great.